So obviously Everton come into this game off the back of a pretty comprehensive 4-1 victory in the Cup against Brentford. I thought we were brilliant in that game. The football was a far cry from what we had to watch under Benitez. And I think it does bode well for the games that we have up ahead that we probably won't get dragged into a relegation battle. Um, I was saying that I think that realistically if we do play like that or around that standard, we'll win a lot more than we lose. And I think that's that's pretty good enough for where we are right now. And and then with the way that it, 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 it does play, it can be progressed into something that can obviously push you higher up the table, provided that he's learnt from his past mistakes at Derby and Chelsea. Newcastle obviously didn't play, I think, but they were knocked out in the last round of the Cup, so they'll be slightly more rested after this winter break period. But um, maybe uh, that might fail them a little bit due to a bit of sharpness that we might have instead of them. We did obviously lose an extra player in Godfrey through injury in that game, which adds to our growing injury list. But I think that the, the signs that we got from that game mean that we have every right to go into this game hoping to get a pretty decent result. Because if we don't, we will get dragged into a relegation battle. I'm pretty confident of that. With the, the run of fixtures that we have, especially the, our last eight games where we have to play a lot of the, uh, the bigger sides. And obviously, last time we played Newcastle, we did lose at St. James's Park. That was a 2-1 defeat. Calvert-Lewin did score, and it's, it's unlikely touch and go as to whether he'll play or not. Uh, Lampard said they will be assessing him. So it'll be interesting to see whether Calvert-Lewin's about the squad. But I think we do always struggle against Newcastle. It's quite an awkward one to predict. We've won some, we've lost some, and we've thrown some away in the last minute at Goodison. So it is an interesting game. They haven't beaten us in consecutive home games though since 2002, where they beat us three consecutive home games on the run going through until 2004. What that means for this game remains to be seen because this is a pretty different Newcastle side to the one we played last time. Obviously new manager, a lot of new faces, a completely new style of football, new ownership, uh, pretty much a new lease of life for the fans that will obviously be showing up in huge numbers and in good spirits with regards to this takeover which has completely revitalised the club. We have scored in our last 10 away games against Newcastle however so I suppose that bodes well and the way Lampard plays you know pressing front foot football I think we will do all right in terms of goal scoring it's just whether we can keep them out of the back. Newcastle obviously don't have the greatest of records at home or at all in the Premier League this season they've only won once in 11 home league games in the Premier League so um, I, I think obviously they've not won many they've, they only won their, their second game of the season in the league against Leeds the last time out but that was a little while ago now so there's, there is a reason why they're 19th in the league but as I mentioned they, they have signed a lot of new faces and the team that we play will be a completely different one pretty much to the one that's played the first half of the season and Newcastle obviously aren't the highest scoring side either they haven't scored m more than once uh, since they drew 3-0 with Brentford which was about nine Premier League games ago so I think that combined with the statistic that we obviously like a goal at St James's Park, it does bode well for us. We've got every reason to go in expecting a decent result. And uh, Tuesday is statistically Everton's favourite day of the week to play on. Um, 48%, um, 43% sorry, is our win rate on a Tuesday. So you can read into that what you want. But um, I, think, I think we do have every reason to go in with a good result, to go in expecting a good result. It's just whether we'll be affected by our pretty hefty injury list. Um, obviously, as I mentioned, Calvert-Lewin will be pretty touch and go, but Abdullah Decore ruled out completely and Ben Godfrey did leave Goodison on crutches against Brentford. He had to go off pretty early on and was replaced by another injury prone centre back, Yeri Mina. If we can keep him fit, he'll be huge for us, I think, in the run-in of this season. But um, I think if we're gonna have an injury, centre back isn't the worst position because I think we are quite deep while I don't think Holgate's the br most brilliant centre-back in the world, I think he can do a pretty alright job. Same with Keane and with Mina beside. I think it keeps everyone else pretty solid. This is no longer the Cup as well, which means Deli Alley and Donny van der Beek will be available for us. That's huge and it means that Lampard can probably switch to his more favoured 4-3-3 formation. I'll be really interested to see them both. I think probably only one of them will get the start. It'd be pretty hard to drop Gomez or Alan after the performances they dropped in the last game. Whichever one it is, I'll be excited to see them and hopefully the other one might come on for a little cameo at the end. 
Um, but I think our injury news is a lot worse than Newcastle's. They obviously are missing the star striker, Callum Wilson, who's been out for quite some time. He is another one who loves a goal against us. He's bagged a few braces in recent years. But the main thing with them is all the new signings. Dan Byrne, Matt Target, Bruno Guimaraes, um, all will probably be in contention to start this game. And, and obviously Kieran Trippier, who was signed a lot earlier on in the window. Maybe they'll suffer from, you know, a lack of gel, gelling, you know, their first game. That's all we can really hope for because I don't really know a great deal about Guimaraes. I know Matt Target, Dan Byrne, both a couple of solid, smart little signings and I think they'll do well for them for the rest of the season. But it'll be interesting to see whether they do, you know, work together as a team. Obviously, Joel Linton as well hobbled off against Leeds a little while ago, but he, he probably will be fit for this game, I imagine. Now, as I said, for the Everton team, I think Lampard will probably revert back to his 4-3-3, probably match Newcastle's because we don't want to get overrun in the midfield as we have done quite a lot this season. You imagine Pickford will start in goal, who's been ever-present, solid for us for God knows how long now. I probably think Coleman will start again at right back. Probably be a bit too much to throw Patterson in at the deep end first game away at Newcastle, but... I'd like to see him soon, Patterson maybe given 20 minutes on the end of a game. I, I would have liked to have seen him against Brentford, truth be told, but Coleman did impress me a lot. I think he does do well, Coleman, with um, with a pressing system because it allows him, you know, to, to push up and then other defenders then have to, you know, mop up for him. He's not completely reliant on his defensive ability, which has never really been, you know, his, his highest, his best quality. It has always been his going, going forward. As his legs have gone though, I do think Patterson needs to start getting you know slowly integrated into the team because he is the future. Michael Enkel will obviously start left back, who again I thought was pretty solid. He seems to be growing into, you know, the Everton shirt. And then centre back, you imagine Keane will play. I think Mina would have started had he not had been you know called upon so early on. I, I think he will, but I wouldn't be surprised to see Holgate thrown in there. As I said, Gomez and Allen, they can't really be dropped. I think Van der Beek will probably be preferred over Ali for, for a starting position. But as I said, I wouldn't be, wouldn't be too bothered whichever way he goes. And I do think we'll see both of them at some point during the game. I think Del, uh, Van der Beek could probably give us a bit more balance in the midfield. If Calvert-Lewin was to be back, you imagine he probably will start up front. But again, that front three was un, un, pretty faultless. I, think, I thought Gordon was brilliant in terms of you know, leading the press. He's kind of just everything what Everton is, and, and that's why the fans love him so much. Gray is just an electric player, so great to watch. And then you've got obviously got Richarlison, who's just Richarlison. He's, he's a good footballer, to say the least. I think it'd be harsh to drop any three of them. It depends what kind of a way Lampard wants us to play, You know whether he wants us to keep it on the ground or whether he wants us to knock balls in. I wouldn't really risk him in this game. I don't think he'll have much fun against Dan Byrne. He's an absolute mountain of a man. And I think the way we play, we, we played along the floor against Brentford would probably facilitate us more against Newcastle, you know, with the with the clunky centre-backs that they, they have. Now, in terms of the Newcastle team, I can see them throwing a lot of the new signings in there. You imagine Dubravka would probably start in goal, Trippier at right-back, and then probably Matt Target left-back. Lachelle's is most likely to start alongside the new signing Dan Burns. So it's a pretty new look back four. And then the midfield three, uh, Joel Linton, the newly reformed central midfielder, will probably play alongside Shelby. And then I think we'll probably see Green Meresh. And then the front three, um, it's pretty pretty nailed on to be St. Maximin, Fraser, and then Chris Wood up front. When you go through it, it's a pretty new look team. It is, it's got a lot of legs in there. It's got a lot of freshness. And I do think it's not going to be as easy a game as it would have been two months ago, say, especially when the game was supposed to be played before, well, the home fixture, before that was postponed. So I think we will have a tough time against Newcastle. I'd be disappointed if we didn't get a decent result um, because of the fact that there are a lot of new signings. But I, I, I do think it is a very strong side and we do need to be careful. I think Lampard will probably be very wary of that. Obviously, it is, as I said, a massive game for Everton. 16th versus 19th. And if we lose, we really get dragged into the, the thick of it at the bottom. There is only four points separating the sides. And we do have a game in hand, but, you know, it, it doesn't really mean a great deal if you don't win them. You want to be 
distancing yourself as soon as you possibly can. And I think a win here would really let us, you know, start looking up rather than looking behind us for the rest of the season. Now, neither team is really in very good form. Um, we've got our cup win and our new manager, you know, uplift for a little bit. They've just beaten Leeds most recently. So I think it will make for quite an interesting tie. I'd probably lean towards an Everton win purely based on this, this you know, Lampard effect, the new manager coming in and giving everyone a lift. And obviously the two new signings will just bolster that midfield a little bit more. I think the way we play or or are going to play under Lampard, it does mean that we probably will concede a lot of chances. But I think with the quality that we have up front, we're more liable to outscore Newcastle than they are to outscore us, which is why I probably lean towards maybe an Everton win 2-1, narrow 2-1 win. Um, I, I'd just take a win in any way, to be honest, to distance yourself from that relegation area because we need to start looking up and having a bit more positivity back at Goodison Park. You can let us know in the comments down below what you think the score is going to be, how you think the game will go, and thank you very much for watching. Up the Toffees.